Welcome to another edition of Exotic Gardening UK Yorkshire Chris Weekly. And what a week we've had. It's been constant gales and blustery showers all week. We've had rain every single day. Over Friday and Saturday it just didn't stop raining at all. And it's caused a few problems in the garden. So my fence has got a bit wobbly in parts, so I'm going to have to brace that. Some of the plants have become a bit top heavy and sort of leaning at an angle. And even the Chiskea bamboo, the giant bamboo, it is wobbling. The, the actual culms themselves have gone loose in the ground because the ground's very wet. And along with the winds, it's meant everything just became loose in the ground. So it's not been the best week for gardening. But luckily it's come out sunny today on Sunday, even though it is very windy still. So coming up in today's edition, we will be potting up on sete bananas. We'll be unwrapping the mousse of baju in the garden. We'll be sowing the first lot of seeds and putting them in the propagator in the greenhouse. And we'll be planting out lots of climbers behind the jungle hut. Right, I'm just behind the jungle hut now and I've got this bare fence that I want to cover with some climbers this summer. So what I'm going to do is I've got some of this polypropylene plastic mesh and it's pretty inexpensive, it doesn't rot and I'm basically just going to staple this to the fence with my heavy duty stapler and this will provide the support for the climbers to grow up and cover this pretty boring ugly fence. So I'm gonna hang it from the top like so and then basically I'm just gonna go along and staple this to the fence. So it's on the strongest setting. I'm just gonna go here Staple it there, just go across the top and do a few staples. And do a few further down. It wants to be a little bit loose this because I need the climbers to be able to get the growth behind as well as in front of the mesh. And then at the base, at the bottom, I'm just going to get down to ground level almost and then cut across the mesh and use the remaining piece just to go next to it. So I'll just carry on doing that now. And there we have the finished trellis safely fastened to the fence. Now it's time to plant the climbers. So this is the trellis that I've just put on the fence and if we just look down we can see where I'm actually going to plant the climbers and what we have is a layer of topsoil underneath that is a thick layer of proper thick heavy clay that was dug out from the pond and then as we go further down we've got the original layer of topsoil for about 20 odd centimetres. So there's a fair depth, I know they've got the bad clay level in here. I'm surprised actually how dry it is because it's been raining all week and this is the overflow from the pond so it is a pretty wet area but actually underneath it's not saturated completely. So time to get planting. So the climber that we're going to grow here is this evergreen glossy leaved Honeysuckle, which is Lonicera Henryi Copper Beauty, 
and this will have nice flowers as well with perfume hopefully you can see the newest sleeves have got a bit of copper to them as well so in the planting hole down there I've dug it over the base of that down to the top, original topsoil I'm going to add a bit of compost and then we're going to plant this not too deep we're going to plant it at the same level as growing in the pot and we're going to angle it slightly towards the fence so the planting hole is about 25-30 centimetres away from the base of the fence that's got a fantastic root ball on that really lots of nice healthy roots all the way around, it's not too pot bound so I'll just angle that towards the fence like so now I'll backfill this and give it a good water even though it is absolutely chucking it down now I'm under the shelter of the, the jungle hut so it's not too wet here but I will give it a good watering once I've backfilled it so there we have the finished final planting of the honeysuckle there and as you can see I've given it a bit of a mulch of compost and a good watering I've taken away the cane and just started to allow the climber just to go onto the, onto the mesh there to give it a helping hand and this is a good place for this plant because the roots will always be cool in the shade but as this grows up it will be in the sun as well so it's the best of both worlds which the honeysuckle really likes so that's one climber done, it's time to do another climber now the next climber that I've got to put in it's strictly speaking not really a climber, it's more of a scrambling sort of shrubby plant which is this fat's hedra variegated form which is a cross between ivy and the fatsia so it's evergreen as well so this will need tying in so this will branch, get thicker branches sort of thick as your finger and this will need to be like I said attached to the mesh here and I might allow it to come across and go onto the bamboo poles eventually as well cover this area and all this mesh over here will easily be covered by the honeysuckle that will cover quite a large area but this will just give a bit of an extra detail in this area a bit of uh, difference so I like the contrast in the leaves between this one and this one when they intermingle eventually so same process I'll water this dig over the, the ground, add some compost, plant it distance away from the fence, give it another watering but this time I will sort of tie this into the fence as it grows up. Now the final climber that I'm going to plant today is this fabulous hydrangea seamanii which has again evergreen leaves to cover the fence all year round and it does have sort of typical hydrangea white flowers in summer but the best thing about this climber is you can grow it in sun or shade and it is self-attaching, self-supporting so it will cling to the fence much like ivy does as well and as you can see it's got this wonderful nice thick glossy evergreen leaves and it's also got a real good root system on this one and I'm going to plant this by the fence again giving it a distance planting it between two palm trees so we've got the Trachycarpus nanus down there very small and the Latisexis and in between that I've got about 50 centimeters or so and I'm going to plant this at an angle about 30 centimeters away from the fence leaning it towards the fence and I'm going to keep the cane attached to it to give it some support and direction towards the fence and it does take quite a while to establish so it might not do anything for a year or two and then it should start growing the attachment filaments to attach to the fence I do have another one of these hydrangeas in the garden for about four years now but that's in deep deep shade and that's only just starting to move, grow and attach itself so it might take a while for this one to do the same. So anyway, let's get this in the ground. The top of the 
the soil that was in the pot level with the ground here, angled towards the fence, and then I'll just backfill that with this really good topsoil and compost mixed together and I'll go all the way around and then I'll make sure to give this a really good water so I'll just carry on doing that now now this very very thin slip of land soil here between the pond and the jungle hut is basically clay with just a tiny amount of topsoil put on top and it's a bit of a tricky area about what to plant in this area. I need something really tough that will survive in these really tricky conditions that are going to get wet in winter and probably bone dry in summer. It's not irrigated that area. So what I'm going to plant is some of the Persicaria Purple Fantasy which is a bit of a thug that's growing closer to the house. I'm going to transfer that now from there into this small area and hopefully it will establish quickly and grow to about 50-60 centimetres so up to the top of that bamboo post and I can always cut it back whenever to keep the, the leaves and the foliage nice and fresh for our summer. But that's what I'll do now. So this is a Persicaria Purple Fantasy as you can see it's shooting quite well now any frost will blacken the leaves but new leaves will follow because it's a very vigorous plant I also have the, the red dragon over here that's growing as well but that one gets pretty, pretty tall, too tall and leggy for near the pond so I'm going to dig a chunk of this up now, it's pretty shallow rooted and it doesn't matter how you dig it up, it'll just root and grow from whatever points of stem and root that you pop in the ground, so it's dead easy to propagate so now I've dug up the persicaria and as you can see just a load of roots and stems just breaks apart really easily see how it just roots from every part of the stem and there's literally hundreds of plants here that I've just dug up basically one little stem, you only need a few centimetres and that's a new plant, so that I could easily separate into about 6-7 plants so there's loads of material here to plant by the side of the jungle hut that's a Persicaria purple fantasy. Lots of little stems and plants all planted in that very small area and that will soon be covered as soon as it warms up and spring really arrives. And that is job done. Well it's mid-March now and it's time to sow my first lot of seeds. So I am in the garage at the moment because it's uh, it's wet and very windy outside still, it's been a very wet week and I'm going to mix my compost mixture put them into the seed trays and pots and then sow the seeds some of which I collected from last year's plants and some of which I have bought from an online nursery so let's take a look so this is my big container where I've been mixing up my compost mix which is about half John Inns number one seed sowing compost and about 25% multi-purpose compost and about 25% perlite and I've given that a real good mix very easy to forget the corners but I've gone over this and mixed it for ages now it's nicely mixed through and it's been in the sunshine for the last hour or so just to warm it up a bit because you don't really want to sow seed into really cold compost so that's nicely mixed now and this is going to go into my seed trays so here's one of my seed trays over here and in this seed tray we're going to sow this Ciliosia plumosa pampas plume mixture Prince of Wales feathers which is a half hardy annual and what's going to happen with this plant is it'll grow lots of little seedlings hopefully in this tray and then these will be potted on and then planted out and they will have sort of, sort of basic green foliage but the, the reason I'm going to grow it is because of the plumes of, sort of multicoloured sort of like feather like flowers basically so and they'll last for ages as well 
So we'll get the compost mixed, put it into my seed tray, like so. I'll level this off, give it a shake, and I'm going to tap this down. And then with these seeds, and basically there's thousands of little seeds in here, I'm going to sow them over the surface and then sprinkle a little bit of compost over the top. So here are the Siliosia seeds. As you can see there is small black shiny seeds, almost identical to Amaranthus seeds. And these I'm just going to sow over the surface very, very lightly, just over all over here. Just over there. And then I'm just going to take a real tiny bit of compost, doesn't really need much at all. Just sprinkle that over. All you need really is the seeds to be in contact with the compost. Doesn't matter if a lot of them are on the surface. Just spin the fingers across there. Press that down. And the compost is quite damp actually, so they probably don't need watering in this case. And then that is going to go into the propagator in the greenhouse. But first I'm going to go and sow the rest of my seeds. So let's have a look at some of the other seeds that I'm going to be growing this spring. In this seed tray we're going to be sowing this Aristolochia macrophylla, Dutchman's Pipe. This is a hardy perennial Dutchman's Pipe. The flowers aren't too big but it should have really nice heart shaped leaves. So that's going to be sown in a seed tray, same compost mix as before. We're also going to have a look and sow some of the seeds I collected. If you remember from last autumn of the Cleome Violet Queen. I collected those, put them in an envelope and all the seeds were then put in a plastic container in the fridge just to keep them cool along with some desiccating sort of crystals to keep the moisture at bay. So they're going to be sown. And I'm also going to sow the Spanish flag, the Ipamia labata, which is the multicoloured of flowers of red, yellow, orange and white and these would be a climber go up to about two, two and a half metres tall, something like that they were really successful last year and I want to grow lots more so I collected lots of seeds last autumn I've also got the kakabeek, the red flowered version and these are from New Zealand, these seeds are actually from New Zealand and there should be five seeds in here so they're just going to go in a just a little pot of their own and then we've also got some zinnias and this year I'm going to grow the giant scarlet ones zinnia elegans these don't like root disturbance so they're not going to go in a seed tray they're going to go into individual modules again same compost mixture as I've just shown you these will be surface sown and we'll put two or three seeds in each module. And then, just because I collected them, I've got these canna seeds. And these are big seeds and if we have a look in here, let's get some out. So these are big round seeds. And what I'm going to do is scarify these or get these basically ready to start sprouting by cracking the hard case of these seeds and if you can hear this you can hear they're very very hard these seeds they're like bullets and you can nick the seeds with some nail clippers or you can use a file and file them all individually but both those methods take quite a long time especially if you've got a lot of seeds like this and another way to do it is to use boiling water to crack the seeds and allow the moisture to get into the seed. So that is a method I'm going to use now. So I'm just going to boil a kettle and then I'm going to pour the water onto the seeds. Now the kettle's just getting to the boil and you've got to use the water while well, it's close to 100 degrees as possible. So as soon as this boils, I will pour it over the seeds.
And now that's obviously boiling water. If I leave that too long, it will kill the seeds. So just leave it there for about 20 seconds. Steamed up the lens there. Give that a wipe. Okay. So now I'll just pour this water away. So now I've drained all the water off the can of seeds and what the boiling water should have done is sort of drawn any sort of layer of oxygen between the outer coat and the inner coat of the seed and allow water to get into the seeds with little microfactures. And as you can see on this one here, there's a little raised area now and there and throughout these and this will just rub off and allow moisture to get into the seeds. So anyway, what I'll do with these and the rest of the seeds is soak them for another couple of days in warm water in this jar that I'll keep by the radiator and change two or three times a day. And then I'll sow them into pots and they'll germinate pretty quickly. I'll keep you updated on their progress in future videos. So now all the seed trays the modules are all in the heater propagator which the base of is kept above 20 degrees at all times and as you can see I've removed most of the plants that were in here over winter so for just for a few weeks the things like the irisene have been brought into the house just on a windowsill and then they'll be brought out in a few weeks time and potted up into individual pots and in that time all my Aeoniums will be outside, so things like the seedlings will be able to go on the benches over there. So it's a bit of a merry-go-round trying to juggle everything, find space for everything, because it's only a small greenhouse. So anyway, everything's been really well watered in here. And I'm going to put the propagator lids on the top. That will keep it nice and warm and the moisture in. And I have to watch the temperatures in here because it will get very hot with obviously the sun getting stronger now. So I have to be careful of that. So that's one lid on, I'll put the other one on and then everything will stay nice and closed up for a few days until the first seedlings start emerging. And obviously they'll all emerge at different times. Some like the zinnias might be in three or four days. And some like the Dutchman's pipe could be two or three months, so we'll have to keep an eye on each thing individually, check on them each day. And that is the first lot of seedlings done. And it's great to think that in these small cells and seed trays, eventually in a few months time there'll be lots of plants that will cover basically half the garden with summer flowers. I should also mention that all events, which are numerous ones on this propagator, have all been closed. And that is just until the first seedlings emerge, just to keep the moisture and the heat in there. And then when they emerge, then I'll open the vents so there's more ventilation. And if I just look around the greenhouse, you can see the aeoniums are really coming on now they're looking a bit smaller and redder because they're a bit more stressed because it's got a lot warmer in here and obviously they're just lying on the benches and in trays so they're not getting that much moisture but I have for the first time this year given everything a good sprinkling of hosepipe water so I think there's a bit of a dowsing of water over there so that should collect and give a bit of moisture to these plants and that includes the Onsete banana so they've had their first proper watering all winter so when they were first put in last I think it was November they had a bit of water to settle the roots and that has been it until today so they've had a good watering now and that includes some of the rare palm hybrids down here as well so it's that Bootia times Shebea F3 and the Erisbatha times Siagras palms as well over there and also this very nice Parajabea sunker that I will plant out eventually. And another plant I need to deal with are these Onsete Morelli eyes that look dead to the average person because they're just all crinkled up 
sort of brown leaves on here that has been in the greenhouse with no compost at all. Just loose, I can pick it up. But if you look closer, you can see signs of life down here, the leaf coming through. So these now I will tidy up and I'll pot them up, leave them in the greenhouse and start them into growth. Here are the four Ancetae Morelii. I've just brought them outside. As you can see, there's no live roots on them at all yet, but there is some growth coming out the tops. And these I'll tidy up. I'll use a bread knife just to cut away all these old leaves. I'll pot them up in the same mixture that I've used for sowing my seeds. It's got lots of perlite in, and they all sit in the greenhouse where it's nice and warm in the daytime. Hopefully. The roots will start forming and these will be ready to plant out in May. So now I've tidied up all my Insette Rallii bananas, got rid of all the dead foliage and I've checked them all over and what I've been looking for is to see any rot. So if you look at this one for instance, signs that it's alive obviously you've got green growth at the top which is a great sign and around the base if you feel it it's nice and hard. It's not all black and sweating. If it's all black and sweating, then I know it's rotted away. The base itself, again, it's nice and firm around the edges. This one is soft at the bottom. That doesn't matter because the roots aren't gonna grow from this base here. The roots actually grow from just at the base here. So all the new growth will come from this point and then this thicker bit of rhizome that's about five to ten centimetres deep. This will sort of dry off, some might rot off, some might just harden off, but there'll be no growth from that point. All come from the base around here. So what I'm gonna do is pot these up. What I've got is the smallest possible size pot, because I don't want a big pot. All we're trying to do is to get these into active growth. So we want roots to form. And by the time that's happened, we've got a leaf or two out, it'll be time to plant them out in the garden. So timing is quite important here. Ideally, if I had enough space, I'd, I'd keep these growing all winter, but I don't. I don't want to get these growing too early, so not in February. Otherwise, it'll be too big before it gets uh, warm enough outside. But now mid-March to about early May is the time you really want to start getting these into growth. And obviously, the smaller they are, the shorter the period of time they be completely dormant because they'll dry out far too much and not grow well. The bigger ones can last much longer dormant. But anyway, I'm going to start these all into growth now. So I've just got my compost mixture here, which is perlite, compost and seed sowing compost. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as it's nice and free draining because all you're going to do is get the roots growing and I'm only putting about a third of the depth of this one full of compost and then I'm going to place this in it goes quite deep in the pot and then all I'm going to do is fill this up with compost all around here and then give it a little wiggle Firm it all the way round and then that will go into the greenhouse. The compost is pretty moist, it won't need a water yet. And then when I see roots or more leaves opening, I'll give it another good water, probably in about a week's, ten days time. So let's carry on potting up the rest. So that's the Onsete Murlei bananas potted up in the greenhouse, middle of March 2019. So in just a month or so time, it should be a decent amount of roots on these. So that's at mid-April. And then another month from then, middle of May, they'll be planted out, along with all the Haniba bananas that have rooted over winter. Now it's time to look at some bananas outside. So I'm outside at the end of the garden now, and finally got a bit of sunshine. It's not too windy at this moment in time. And we're past the worst of the weather, 99% certain we're not going to get a deep freeze now. We're still going to get cold frosty nights, but we're not going to get a long, cold, damaging freeze that could damage this banana, which is wrapped up, the Musabaju. 
Didn't wrap up all of them. The one in the front garden is completely unwrapped, unprotected, and it's grown away fine now. And over here, this Musabaju stem was left unprotected. I thought it frozen through and there was some damage on the side, but it's still firm all the way up and it's starting to grow. So that is totally fine. But I did wrap up this main clump mainly to show how it's done and also I wanted to guarantee at least some stems getting through winter if it had been really really cold but now like I said the worst of the weather's behind us we can get rid of all the straw and all the protection so I can just rip this off and then all this I'm just going to put into a big dump bag take all this away it's nice it's kept nice and dry actually even though it didn't have a proper top on here and I'm going to show you what the stems look like at the base and as you can see now they're completely unwrapped they're all still standing let's take a closer look at the base of these so this is the base of the Musabaju as you can see the nice thick stems are really firm in the ground there not really wobbling and then even the small little pups like this one, which is like, what, 10 centimetres tall, that's still firm there and that will grow away nicely. And then the middle sized pups, these will completely submerge in all the straw. They have stay green, actually starting to grow away at the top as well, and they're nice and firm. And we've got several around there and the nice big stem at the back. So all in all, the protections worked, it was cheap, what was it, £3 for the, all the straw, a little bit of fleece and chicken wire, and a couple of big posts that I can reuse again, and it didn't take too long to do. It's guaranteed that these stems will get, have got through winter. So that's another successful job done.